So yeah, so um, Anna Pasternak is a famous journalist and she had written this article about Catherine for Tatler a few years ago. And apparently she's now coming out with some interesting tidbits. Let's delve into this. So this is Celebrity. And we have here a story. Anna Pasternak tells all about the infamous 2020 Catherine the Great Tatler story. I also heard about that earlier today. So, I'll, you know, I'll put add that on to, to the, the video I was making about this. Um, I remember this. Uh, I remember this, but I don't remember why it was a problem. Um, remember Tatler's infamous Catelyn the Great, Catherine the Great cover story that happened in May 2020 as the world was mostly locked down during the pandemic. Tatler hired royal writer Anna Pasternak to write a gossipy piece which worked as a straightforward embiggening article. Embiggening. Embiggening. Wow. Embiggening, Kate. Wow. These are some words, man. Embiggening, Kate. <laughs> Never used that before in my life. Um, beginning Kate article and also worked as a hilarious parody of those words, of those kinds of Kate walks on water stories. <laughs> there were so many amazing quotes and insights like friends of Kate wailing. She feels exhausted and trapped. She's working as hard as a top CEO who has to be wheeled out all the time without the benefits of boundaries and plenty of holidays. I do remember that. Pasternak also got quotes from people who said, outright that Carol Middleton ran William and Kate's household and bossed around staffers. What else? It was a portrait of William and Kate as completely furious that the Sussexes walked away and there was even a cryptic mention of Rose Hanbury. Uh-huh. So, okay. So, Tessia here on Celebrity. When the Tatler cover story came out, it landed like a bomb in royal list media. Kensington Palace threatened Tatler, and there was some talk about whether they would sue. Over the course of four months, Tatler began removing sections from the online story, eventually culling the whole thing down to bare bones. <laughs> Pasternak has never really addressed what happened in 2020 until now. She recently chatted with the infamous podcast. You can hear the whole episode here. Here is one section making the rounds. Worthless backstabbers, William and Kate are. Ooh. Oh, wow. Who said that? Throughout the whole episode, the hosts are being rather snotty about the Duchess of Sussex, but Pasternak spends most of the interview saying, no, I completely understand why the Sussexes walked away and the British media and the royal institution would have destroyed them. Pasternak calls out the invisible contract between the monarchy and the print media, saying that, there is an explicit and implicit editorial stance that William and Kate must be lavished with praise at all times, while nothing positive can ever be written or published about the Sussexes. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Pasternak also dishes about what happened behind the scenes during the Tatler fiasco. Basically, Tatler's lawyers told her not to say anything and not to do interviews until they worked something out. By September 2020, they worked out a deal to avoid being sued by William and Kate. Wow. And Kensington Palace, William leaked the deal to the Daily Mail. Ah, okay. So Kensington Palace leaked the deal to the mail. Okay, so that's the, the, the uh, involvement of the Daily Mail. Okay, got it. What's interesting about that is that all Tatler really did to avoid being sued was remove the bulk of the article from its online archives months after the fact thousands of outlets had already repeated and archived those or archived those now deleted sections tatler got the last laugh it was a rare moment where a british outlet made kate sound like a lazy self-absorbed dumbass and it took kensington palace four months to figure out how to handle it well i don't think you know 2020 i mean now i mean how do you explain the fact that king charles a man pushing 80 and rumored to have um cancer what is the, a very serious cancer um oh my gosh i don't even remember the name of the cancer right this minute 
he has a very serious cancer. Let's leave it at that, according to rumors. And I, I did a video about it. And right now I just can't remember the, the name of it. But um, he's still up and about doing everything. Her aunt-in-law, Fergie, also has cancer of the breasts and other parts of her anatomy, I guess, allegedly. And she's up and about. And this person here, who has some kind of vague ha cancer, had been present off the cuff statement. And she's taking preventative chemotherapy, which means that she doesn't even have cancer right now, according to what she said, according to what she said, right? Um, hasn't been working and will not be working, it sounds like, for, for the rest of the year. Because, I mean, I've heard that um, trooping the collar, she's doing nothing. She's not going with William in November. She's been gone since December. It's already, it's nearly five months. And um, yeah, you know, I, I think this is just, this uh, this particular article in Tatler and this idea of how lazy and self-absorbed she is, is now coming to bear with this new situation with the Catler, I mean, Catler cancer had been present because um, it sounds to me that, you know, this person just doesn't want to do all these appearances and all this work, right? And um, so this is um, celebrity, but let's go back to the young man that I was telling you about. Just watching um, Sussex Family TV, there's a young guy on this uh, YouTube channel that I think is very, very, he's very good. He's very well informed and he has a very interesting accent. So when he speaks, it's just very, very interesting. And he's very passionate about Megan and Harry, especially Megan, I think. So it's just, it's, it's really cute to watch, you know, but he's very, very informative. I wouldn't be surprised if he's, he, he looks very young. So I'm thinking he's maybe a law student or something. Um, cause he's very, very logical. You know what I mean? But that said, he mentioned this woman, Anna Pasternak, who is a, 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 a journalist. And I think she worked with the Daily Mail at one point. And he, he ran this, um, this audio of her saying that William actually calls up the Daily Mail to, to tell them, you know, what he wants printed and, and what he doesn't want printed in their paper, which was not a big surprise, but to get someone from the inside saying this, because apparently they actually turned on her at one point and, you know, wrote up some stuff about her. So the, the thing is, she was in, and then she was part of, you know, the reptilian royal posse, if you will, and then she was out. And so she she had some interesting things to say. So I was trying to find the audio. I couldn't find it, but I found a different one. Let's listen to what Anna said here, because it's very interesting, I think. Meet you, meet you after the jump. Tremendous uh, fan of Meghan and Harry, and I thought that the previous episodes were rather self-indulgent, and a lot of it was unnecessary. I found myself really staggered by the latest batch of episodes, because um, it seemed to me that Harry is absolutely telling the truth. I think we've learned that there is a far greater level of manipulation from the royal household with the press. It is indeed a dirty game, and uh, I happen to know that the royal uh, households do brief against each other. So um, I think we've learned that you know that it all is not what it seems necessarily when the House of Windsor uh, presents um, a very you know uh, above board front. Um, and I think that a lot of what was said in the latest episodes is concerning and also deeply damaging to the monarchy. I also think that um, Harry was talking the exact truth when he said that, um, of course, what was problematic for him and Meghan was their star quality and their popularity post their fantastic Australia trip. And, you know, history has shown that if you're not in the direct line of succession and you steal too much oxygen, uh, things don't end well. Do you think anything will change as a result of any of those comments? Sadly not. I think that they'll be brushed aside under the carpet, as Nicholas Witchell said. Wow. So that's really interesting. 
So this is the channel I was looking at, Sussex Family TV. Let's hear what he said about Anna Pasternak. So this is the young man. Let's hear what he had to say. Family. Close to four years ago, a carnival, all so-called expert called Anna Pasternak, was asked by the editor of Tatla magazine to write an amazing article full of praises of Kate Milton. In my family, she was told that her article, Have Peace for Kate Milton, would become the front page cover of Tatler magazine. And Anna Pastor said, okay, fine, I'll write the piece. And she wrote an article whereby he made Right, so he goes on and on about that, but then the, the really good part was when he played that, I mean, all of it is good, but the, the interesting and relevant part to this Anna Pasternak person comes up in the jump, in the, right after the jump. Same thing, my family. The truth is being revealed, but then why? Why is she revealing the truth finally, right now, my family? We will find out colourful piece on Kate and what they didn't want was a puff piece Great. and this piece created the most enormous backlash I, I just could not believe it and one of the things that was levelled at me was that I had said that Kate was perilously thin I mean you know and I was thinking of um, Tom Wolfe and New York social x-rays or Hollywood stars they're all size zeros they're all perilously thin and that's kind of a compliment yes my piece did have a very snobby side I'm writing for Tatler it was an article I thought would be sort of tossed aside by you know toffs in stately homes in Britain um, and anyway everyone went berserk about that and Kate and William said they were going to sue Tatler so I had four months oh, in which I was rung up by the Tatler managing director and told and I had the world's media saying you know please can you speak please and I was told please don't speak so for four months I did not speak which was very annoying because I had another book to publish oh, and everyone wouldn't interview me because they said we can't talk to you unless you discuss Tatler <laughs> no, again nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> nightmare nightmare exactly <laughs> That aggrieved me more. I cannot discuss that again. And this is really interesting in light of what's happening with the media and the palace today. So I remember vividly, it was a September Thursday evening, and I was rung up by Louisa Parker Bowles, Camilla's niece, who was then managing uh, director of Tatler. And she said, don't worry, it's all been sorted with the Condé Nast lawyers. Uh, William and Kate, you know, they're not going to sue. But the one thing is, you absolutely... My family, who called her? Who called her and told her, William and Kate Milton are not going to sue Camilla's niece. Camilla Vakabose's niece. Who my family was the managing director of Tatla. Yeah, that was very interesting. I, I never heard that before, that Tatla's managing director was Camilla's niece, Louisa Parker Bowles. Wow. What? This is incestuous. This is incest. You mean all those hit pieces and all those, you know, horrible tongue in cheek, double entendre, and sometimes just openly hostile articles from Tatler were coming from Louisa Parker Bowles, the niece of Carmela? I mean, that's not even why I'm listening to this. I'm trying to hear what Anna Pasternak had to say but this guy is exposing even more oh my god my family continue please hearing this my family please. i was rung up by louisa parker bowles camilla's niece who was then managing a uh, director of tatler and she said don't worry it's all been sorted with the condé nast lawyers uh william and kate you know they're not going to sue but the one thing is you absolutely must not discuss this so you can imagine my uh, consternation on Sunday when I go and get the Sunday newspapers and front cover of the men on Sunday is Kate's victory over Tatler double page spread on me absolutely oh you know my going, God. yes and and I knew that Tatler hadn't leaked it I knew that I hadn't leaked it so I knew that the leak had come straight from Kensington Palace and a year later the journalist who was asked to write the piece verified that William had rung up the 
editor of the Mail on Sunday, uh, at that Friday morning, and somebody from his office went to have lunch with him, and they planted that piece. The royal family manipulate the media. The, mm. I'm talking about the print media, the British print media, in a way you simply would not believe. So, for example, in the <laughs> so yeah, I do think that you know this is a very good video by this young man on uh, Sussex Family TV. And I mean, these are receipts for sure. These are receipts. <laughs> these are epic receipts. And just hearing an editor from the Daily Mail actually admitting that, or oh, wherever she's from, Tapler, whatever, at this point, it's all the same to me, um, that, um, you know, William personally called up to have... Um, you know, stories changed and basically to throw her under the bus is, is not surprising. It's not surprising. I don't know what, how to say, you know, it's not that I'm surprised. I'm not even disappointed. I'm just like, wow. And the thing is that, you know, as this guy pointed out, um, the the article, Catherine the Great, I think I remember that article. It wasn't that long ago. I think I might have even read the article. I don't recall anything being particularly egregious in it. But, you know, the idea that they are so touches and sensitive and easily offended so that they are calling up, you know, the media and the editors and the heads of magazines to retract statements and to rewrite and to, you know, air their grievances about, you know, small little slights in publications about them. And then they remain so silent when so much is being written about Meghan and Harry to this day and has been for the past six or seven years. I mean, really egregious things. The things that have been written about Megan in particular and Harry to a lesser extent don't come near. Uh, or I should say the things that are written about um, Kate and William don't come near to what these people have written about Megan and Harry in particularly, in particular Megan. And their silence is, I mean, deafening is not even really the word. And when you consider how easily offended they are to the point that they're going to personally call up editors of the Daily Mail and Tatler and this and that to have things um, change and to threaten lawsuits and things like that. It's, it's really astounding. Like, like you're just like, you're gobsmacked. I mean, your mouth is just open. Your 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 jaw is your slack jawed. You you can't sort of you you're speechless. Like really, these people are that hypocritical. And the thing is, one of the things that I think um, for me um, that this story drives home is that it confirms my suspicions that. Kate and William are in this together, you know, during the whole where is Kate thing and the forged or fabricated photographs and the apology and everybody's like, oh, William threw his wife onto the bus. He's not a gentleman. You have this sick woman and he has her taking the blame. I, I wasn't buying it then and I'm definitely not buying it now. I think that Kate is as much involved in the deception as William. I think Kate's cancer story is misleading. As I said before, and I will continue to say that, Kate has said that cancer had been found. This is past perfect tense. And that she's taking preventative chemotherapy, which is consistent with not having cancer anymore. Had been found is in the past. It means she doesn't have cancer anymore. And she's taking preventative chemotherapy, chemotherapy to make sure that nothing develops. The thing, though, is that they both wanted and their team at the palace, the entire world, to believe that she's actively in the throes of a cancer diagnosis. And she's riddled with cancer. She's stricken with cancer. She's so sick that everything that they did should be forgiven. And no one should talk about it or ask any questions because, oh, my God, she's so sick. And that is not true. That's very misleading. And for me, 
and then you know this whole story also about um you know about kate um about kate and and william getting a divorce i am not really convinced of that either i think they're very much in 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 this together right i mean because if a man is going to go that far about an article i remember this article there was really nothing in it that was so terrible and you know you you touch my wife just a little bit and he goes completely postal and starts threatening lawsuits this is not a man who's looking to divorce that woman i don't think so you know i think they're very much in it together you know like with the the mother's day photo she took the blame because she knew that if he took the blame it would be more you know destructive and impactful to to them as a couple to to his reign as king to his image his reputation so it this is a partnership this is a partnership i don't think they're getting a divorce i i don't think that he threw her onto the bus i think they t- spoke together and they decided that the way to get out of it and to get the sympathy is for her to take the blame for their lives you see let's see what else he says You've heard that confession. These are receipts that my family, this is evidence that one must keep. This is evidence that one must keep. My family. Evidence of William Lassie working with the same people my family he has used to destroy his mother and his brother's wife. We try to destroy them. Right. So, well, look, I mean, it's time for me to move on to the next project. But yeah, this whole thing just really highlights, I think, for me, that I'm right about these people. I'm right about my instincts about this whole thing. And I think we're going to have to brace ourselves for more um, revelations from more journalists from the inside who really know what's going on with these people. And the story is ongoing. It's not over yet. It's not over.